SI Wave is a power integrity and signals integrity tool. The Signal Net Analyzer Solver that you see here is one of the tools in SI Wave and will be discussed in this video. Signal Net Analyzer is a tool that few SI Wave users know about. It's part of the Signal Integrity bundle in SI Wave. It uses the method of moment to do fast calculations of the impedance of the traces and many other stuff. It exposes each section of any trace and allows the user to study the impedance and the delay of each section of a trace. It also allows the user to study the effect of trace loss and imperfections on signal. Users can inject pulse, uh, PRBS, and clock signals. So many important things you can do with this solver. So let's start. SI wave should not be used to build PCBs. Why this is possible, it's not the best way to utilize it, SI wave, but instead try to import files from a professional CAD tool. SI wave can import the following type of files. See the list here IPC 2581, ODB, and DXF and also the EDB, ANSYS EDB, if you have an ANSYS translator in your CAD 2. Any process in SI Wave starts by selecting the solver. Once you select the solver, then you get a dialog box. And all the user needs to do is to fill up the form and submit it. So we selected the signal net analyzer, and this is the dialog box we got. As you can see, we have all the power planes in red and all the traces in black. If I select any one of them, if I select any one of them, like in this case, I selected the N17055, SI Wave automatically populates this section with information about this trace, the different sections, on which layer, the length, the delay, the impedance, and the reference ground on top and bottom. If I click here, automatically SI Wave plots the impedance along the path. Notice how fast is the process. I can select another trace. Let's say PB this one. And I have the information again of this new trace. I can, if I click here, I can see both lines. That's simply because I clicked this option, which is accumulate and compare plots. If you uh, and check this this option, if you click here, you can only see the results of one trace at a time. So that's an additional feature we have in this dialog box. We can export the plots to an Excel file using the export plots, you see here. You will get the X and Y numbers, two columns. You can also export the net delay using this button. And what you're gonna get, you're gonna get an HTML file. So if I click here and I say export, so I selected the two traces in one, 7055 and PBW. So if I export them, say save, and I save them to a file, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get some sort of an HTML file, and it's an interactive HTML file. So you can switch by length, by delay, by differential line. You can display single-ended, you can display differential, you can display extended. So it's an interactive kind of page. So you can you can post it on the website of your company and people can look at the results, especially if you have like hundreds and hundreds of traces that you are analyzing in your PCB. You can add markers to the plot. So you can add markers if you want. You can also add notes if you want. You can also add limit lines. And you can specify these points here and you can add them. Then this plot can be used in any presentation. Now, 
if you try to plot a power plane, like we, we tried the trace, if, we try, if I try to plot a uh, power plane, immediately you get a warning message saying that this is not a trace, this is the power plane. So uh, SI wave treats power planes in a different way and they should be treated in a different way. Simply because when you go with power plane, then you don't just have uh, input and output, you have input and output plus all the decoupling caps and all the other components in the path. And SI wave does not differentiate between them. Uh, at least this solver does not differentiate between them. So if you select a power plane, it's gonna give you exactly the same thing like this for every two ports in the, uh, in the power plane. So you will have tens and tens of them displayed here. Same thing if you try to select a trace without pins. For example, if I select something like this, it says cannot find any path on net, blah, 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 with pins at both ends. The reason why, because SI wave consider pins as the ports of the trace. If there are no pins, then it doesn't know how to excite that line. So it cannot process that line. Okay, so we are displaying the impedance here. You can also display the transient response of the plots. And you simply select this and you say compute plot and it will compute the response of, uh, for example, the trace that we selected here and it's the first one. Going back to the plot, it shows the impedance along the path of the trace. This is not a TDR plot. The total delay is the actual delay of the trace. These plots are done at one specific frequency. This frequency is determined from the options. To access these options, you need to close the application first, then call the options. Close it first, so let me close it. Let me show how you're gonna do that. I'm gonna close the application, come here and select the options. In the options, you, you can select to have a single frequency or a range of frequencies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna talk about the difference between the two. Uh, you can also specify how SI wave can distinguish between coupled and decoupled lines. So you can specify the conditions here based on this parameter, A times the corresponding trace width. Now, back to the frequency. Now, if you can select single frequency and you can select a range. If you select a range, you still need to specify at what frequency you wanna apply, you wanna do the calculations of the impedance. So, so what's the difference between the two? If, if for both of them, I need to specify one frequency at which I'm calculating Z0. Well, the difference between them is in what we call the transient solver that is available within this solver. So if we go back to the dialog box and we select the two lines again, as you can see, this is the impedance delay plot and I also have the transient response plot. So what is, what is the transient plot? We simply inject a signal on one end, then we watch the received signal on the other side. We start by specifying the transient solver options. So we have the transient simulation options. You don't need to close the application. It's available here. You click on it and you have all these things that you need to fill up. So first you need to specify the source. What kind of source? So you have all these four possibilities you need to specify the stop time and you need to st specify the step size and that's that's a traditional thing for any transient solver no matter what type of signal you select you have to go and you select and you click on manage sources and what happened in many sources is you click on the one that is related to the signal that you selected and you need to enter these information which is the rising time the fall time and also the bit rate, the duty cycle, and all these information. You have to define that signal. You can't just select it. You have to define it. You have to tell SI wave what kind of signal you're gonna inject. Now, based on the rising time and the falling time, you calculate what is the frequency range that you put in the options. If you remember, if we go back to the options, you specify the range. That's where you specify the range, set range. So these numbers are calculated based on the rising time and falling time of your signal, 0.3 over uh, TR or 0.5 over TR. 
depends on what is convenient to you. So going back to our plot, we select the traces, whatever trace we want. For example, we select this one. Then now you say compute plot. So this is the response of your signal that you specified. In our case, we specify the pulse of this duration of almost like 50, uh, five picosecond, five nanosecond. And you notice here how the curve is so smooth because of the frequency range that we selected. Now, if you don't select the frequency range and you select the single frequency, you're gonna see a sharp response. You're not gonna see a curved response. You can reverse the direction of the excitation by simply going down to here, the options here, and you say reverse selected path for transient analysis. You can accumulate all the plots from different lines by selecting this option. Going back to our plot, impedance plot or, or transient plot, notice here that you have also the option of an IBIS model. You can inject an IBIS model. You can also inject a, a pin source if you want. So the way to do that is outside this dialog box. You have to leave this dialog box and go and select this line, this path, then uh, assign an IBIS model to the input of this trace. So let's see how we can do that. So we go back to the model now this is this is the line that I'm looking for and there's the other one here. So I deactivate everything and activate only the traces. So now I can see the two traces, this trace and this trace. This is our N17055. Great. And this the other one is PB PB underscore WR. Great. Now, these two traces are connected to what? Let's see they are connected to what? So this trace is connected to this component. So let's see this component is discrete component PQ4 and it's TQ. Now, once you once you know that you can you can come here and click on it. If you click at the edge, you will see you will get this dialog box. And here you can assign an IBIS source to pins. I click here and I say, I want an IBIS model there. So the system says, so if I go back here, this is, this is by the way, pin, pin number one. So I go to the edge, click at the edge, click to the IBIS. This is the one, this is the one that we want. And here you can specify your IBIS model. So we have the one for, this is for the RAMs, and these are for the drivers. These are um, ASIC, ASIC dies. Now you can have your own. I'm gonna give in the link the location where you can put your IBIS files. And if you put them in that directory in um, SI Wave, then SI Wave will be able to detect them and it will add them automatically to this list for you. Let's say for now, I'm going to select this one just, just for sake of uh, doing the analysis. So I specified, I specified my, uh, my uh, IBIS model. Now, if I come here and instead of using the, the default one, I use anything else other than that, then you will see in the analysis, it will, uh, it will detect that as, as if I have already assigned a source to that pin from an external location, not from within that dialog box. So, so I selected here a PRBS, so I click OK. I... Let's go back to our dialog box. So this is, this is our two lines. As you can see, we put an IBIS model on this trace. And this IBIS model is right on this side at the end of this section. And that's why you see a point here. If you see a point and you click on it, you will see the model, the name of the model, the IBIS model I used here. Now, because for the source, I didn't left it as a standard pulse and I choose something else like PRBS, immediately it gave me a notation here that the signal type 
will be taken as PRBS, not as a standard default uh, pulse. So all the other pins in this trace and the other side will be given a default pulse unless you choose something else from, from the setup, unless you come here and you say, no, instead of using default pulse, I want to use something else. So this is what is going to be applied on all the pins that do not have this definition from outside. If you want to do more, you can, but you have to use to go outside this solver. So what we do, we usually export the schematic to an electronic desktop, and it will be opened in a circuit. And this circuit comes for free with SI wave. So let me select, we have to select a path, for example, this path, and I say export schematic to desktop. And you will see how SI wave, how this solver approximate the trace. You will be able to tell immediately from the shape. Look at here. You see that each section of the trace is approximated using a distributed transmission line. And these are the vias are approximated using the RGC model. And here inside circuit, you can do way more stuff using this approximate model of the trace. Oh, remember, this is not an accurate model of the trace. The accurate model of the trace, you have to use other solvers within SI wave. But this is like a simple, fast, easy to handle, easy to process kind of approximation of the trace. But you can do all kinds of post processing with it within circuit. And within circuit, we have all kinds of independent um, uh, sources that you can apply from I source to voltage to PRBS to uh, pulses to impulses, everything. Shot noise, QAM signals, everything you want to do as long as you have the trace. So as you can see, SI Wave added the I source, the I probe, and the IBIS model. So the model is ready to be solved. You don't need to do anything. If you want to solve for this one, of course, it, it provide you the schematic, but it doesn't provide you which solver to use. In order to see the eye, you have to use what we call a quick eye analysis. If you want to do statistical analysis, which is the bathtub, then you have to use the verify eye analysis. So you select one of them and you run it and you solve for uh, the, the response, the signal integrity response of, of the trace. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. I have learned a lot about the signal net analyzer. Thanks for watching.